Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I thought I'd report on uh, something that happened at church on Sunday. That was yesterday. Um, I was at a spirit-filled church where they sing d devotional songs to God and their hearts are full of love and they have an understanding of the grace that descends from, from God to them to transform their lives. And I have found that that kind of church in the Christian churches is very, um, is very good for absorbing the energies of the ascension process. There's a very strong alignment there. And so I was at that church and, uh, and a couple of things happened to do, I think, with this gateway that's happening right now between the June solstice and the eclipse, August the 21st. 2017 that's going to be taking place. The end of the gateway, uh, according to Sandra Walter of Creative Evolution, is uh, the 25th of August 2017. So, so all during that time this energy is coming into Earth and available to us and it seems to be uh, uh, not so relevant to what I usually peg it to, which is solar flares and solar winds and incoming coronal mass ejections, that kind of thing. It seems to be independent of that and to do with the gateway. Um, anyway, so here's one thing that happened. For some reason my mind went to Alpha Centauri that has the library for, for the universe and, um, and it's the pe beings there are full of soul wisdom and I thought of them and then I remembered how they had sent me a, um, a gift of, of a um, universal translator for sentient beings, which is very helpful to me and, and a lot of fun. I really enjoy conversations with sentient beings wherever I find them. So I thought about how um, the early Christians spoke in tongues and understood each other's languages. And I just thought to mention that to the group that if they asked for a um, universal translator from Alpha Centauri, which might or might not be the thing they wanted to do, then they might get it. And a few of them asked. Some asked and some, uh, their souls asked, but their personality wasn't ready to receive it. So there was a flash of light. Everything became very bright and light. and. In, in the church and which happens quite a bit in that church anyway so but so then uh, then some received it and were about to incorporate it into their DNA and their understanding their soul wisdom and uh, others have could I could see headed in their soul fields but headed on hold for when they were ready to try it out so that was one thing a gift from Alpha Centauri and right in line with the Christian teachings in this case. Then later on, work came up with regard to the inner child and and waking the inner child up one by one and um, and introducing it to the to the big person it's with. You know, so it's a first step in clearing the wounding of the inner child and allowing the child to um, integrate its energy. Uh, with that of the of the grown-up person and in in terms of mental um, energy for the lower mental body and the higher mental body to become united and in terms of, of the medical field uh, for the central nervous system to take over the functions in a conscious way of the autonomic nervous system anyway getting back to the inner child the work was going along a little bit slowly as it always is, just depending on people, sinner child, soul wounding popping out, and then uh, here and there in the congregation as the sermon was going on. And uh, so, so I thought, you know, why not ask, this is something that anyone could do, why not ask for grace to descend and angels to come down and take the hand of the inner child of everyone in the congregation and right now right that very minute you know and and even if they're 
grown-up person wasn't ready to recognize them yet, Tintin Cha will feel protected and taken care of, and so it might be healed. So I tried that. I tried that prayer. May the angels come down, may grace descend, and may the angels come down and take the hand of every little child and every inner child in this congregation. And at that time, there was this big flash of light. It was way cool. And all of the inner children in the congregation felt comforted and, and loved. I feel this is something that any light worker could do right now during this gateway with tremendous results, especially in a congregation of people that are devoted to God in a, in a heartfelt way. So good luck if you decide to try it or some variant on it. I hope your success is just as cool as mine was. Love and light and joy to everyone. So this is a postscript about the technique of introducing the inner child to the guardian angels in groups, especially spiritual groups filled with devotion uh, and love for the divine. Um, I see a congruence between that and the ghost laying technique that I learned from Jeffrey Allen the spiritual counselor many some years ago and uh, the way that he taught that was when the ghost comes around you uh, ask it if it has its suitcase handy and then you ask it if it's ready to 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 leave and if it says no you say well how about a month from now would that give you enough time and then uh, you, you contact it again in a month, but if it says yes, and when it says yes, you say, well now, if you turn around, uh, your guardian angels are waiting behind you to take you on, on that little trip. And so, so invariably, when the ghost or sprite is ready to turn around and does so, it sees the guardian angels there. And uh, if if it sees demons or devils or something like that instead, you say, um, you say, no, I'd rather see the angels or like that. And immediately they change into angels because truthfully, it's just our perception, our mental perception that causes the appearance of, of demons in, in our lives and so forth. So that's a fail safe and very quick way of laying ghosts. And I came to the conclusion, a uh, temporary working con hypothesis, that, that ghosts are really uh, soul wounding of people who have passed on is because they have the same characteristics as the soul wounding of the inner child that I work with uh, on the astral plane. So, um, so they always have some traumatic incident that they tape loop around again over and over again they ha always have audio visual qualities they're like a memory that's stored in full not just a like a mental memory but the actual event <laughs> that's stored in full and so <laughs> and so um it's my cat looking out the window <laughs> she she wants to get into the conversation every time I talk <laughs> So, um, so anyway, um, so the whole trick is to listen, to hear, to hear what the, the stored memory has to tell us so that it can deliver that message and so that it can be resolved into our electromagnetic field. Okay, so, so ghosts are, are, our perception of a ghost is really the person at the, the age when the soul wounding occurred. It's that visual uh, an, uh, auditory image that the go that the astral body of the dearly departed souls is carrying around before it the, before the astral body um, dissolves itself and allows the soul to go on to a, a learning experience on the mental plane before being reincarnated. I know you know all this occult lore already, but but so there are similarities, and so. It's not unusual, not really surprising, that the technique used by Jeffrey Allen for resolving uh, the, the soul wandering and soul upset of ghosts, that of introducing them to their guardian angels, would also work for the inner child uh, 
here on earth while a person is still embodied, you see. So, so I offer that to you for your consideration.